My name's Jan Wood. Welcome to today's episode of Coffee Break. And today I'm here in the rocks for a meeting of the Battle Axe Club. <laughs> Now, if you've been following the program, you'll know that for two hours on a Friday, um, the battle axes meet, and I'm skilling them up so that they can make their own show. Now, OWN stands for the Older Women's Network, and the office is based down in the rocks. We've been our own show is made by older women of topics of interest to older women. Now we're very grateful to the federal government because they've given us a grant which means that we have our own camera, our own tripod, microphone and edit suite. And we're very excited because we have been validated in that the older woman's perspective is a very, very interesting and important one. Hello, my name is Jan Wood. Welcome to today's program. And today the Battle Axes are meet, meeting at Waverley Cemetery. Now we're not really checking out our future resting spots. We're here to make a short film about the life of Louisa Lawson. Now we call ourselves the Battle Axes because we are women in our prime working at the cutting edge of social, political and technological change. <laughs> We're here to make a short documentary on the life of Louisa Lawson, one of Australia's most brilliant, brilliant women who had such an extraordinary effect on Australian history, but she's become invisible, which is one of the problems of... Now we got something over there. Can you hear that, Graham? It's a sander. Yeah, there is a sander going Well, maybe... Can you hear it? You got good hearing? No. <laughs> okay, now Susan O'Brien, who's the Batlax director, writer and um, actor, is making a short film. Oh, no, it's okay. You right? Yeah. <laughs> Gee. You're a hell of a battle axe! <laughs> so we're here today at Waverley Cemetery and we're making a short film on the life of Louisa Lawson, who is probably one of Australia's most significant battle axes. Yeah, I'll just wait for the helicopter to go. We're also making a documentary on ourselves. So we're here to make our documentary and we're using the own camera and so my coffee break camera is going to film the battle axes. Our own camera stands for the Older Women's Network camera. Now us battle axes are all members of the Older Women's Network and our aim is to create new stereotypes of the older woman. With all that? With yep. all that yes. Your turn Susie the marker. You've stuffed up me marker. <laughs> Sorry. Battle axes. Now it has been and used as a very negative term but in my, uh, it should not be used negatively. You keep going, you keep using all your energy and you enjoy what you do and you in my case 
I've used all the skills that I've learned over the years, and they're many, um, to create a film or, or theatre, um, the skills that, that I'm strong in, but I'm also in research, which means then I can write scripts. And um, so it's just a matter of um, being creative and being energetic. We've got a problem. We've got a problem. Road is feeling Graham, but he's not a battle axe. We have to have a woman on this camera. Uh, Don't we? Yes. Yes. Sorry, Graham. It's very <laughs> sexist, but we'll get into trouble off the Older Women's Network because that's why we got our grant. Oh, okay. That only women yeah. were allowed to participate. In the, you're allowed to help carry the bags, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you're not allowed right. to be on the technical side of stuff because it violates the grant. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just thank God I'm here too. And that's what being a battle axe is. Just keep going. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be here if you Doesn't matter, you just start talking. Way, no, I don't know what I said. I just made it up as I But I'm, am I a member of the Old Women's uh, Network? No, you don't have to be. You have to be a battle axe. You're a I'm a battle axe. Battle axe. Oops. Oops. My name is Helen Bailey. You want me to spell it? Yep. Helen, H-E-L-E-N, Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y. Can you hear the plane? Can you? You can't hear it through that. You heard it. I didn't. My name is Helen Bailey and I'm a battle axe. And how, Helen, how do you uh, describe being a battle axe? An older, mature woman. To me, a battle axe is. Oh, sorry. To me, a battle axe is. Someone who... T to me, to me a battle axe is... To me a battle axe is a woman who takes initiative... Don't take no for an and don't take no for an answer. Stops traffic when she has to and does what she has to when she has to. Great. Lifestyle really agrees with me. Stay there. Excellent. Stay My name is Mari Williams and I'm a member of the Battle Axe Club and we have managed to redefine the term Battle Axe, which always referred to women in the negative, but we've turned it into the positive because if I were to say why I call myself a Battle Axe, it's because I come from a long line of battle axes. Strong women who don't take nonsense from anyone. All of my maternal ancestors were battle axes, I'm very proud to say. <laughs> Must be the Celtic in us. <laughs> I love being a battle axe. I find that the lifestyle really agrees with me. Excellent. My Rhoda. name is Rhoda Sexton. Hang on, you might have to say it again, I'll put it in. My name is Rhoda Sexton and I'm proud to be a battle axe. It's um, one way of keeping me going with new technology and I'm learning to use cameras, I'm learning to use video editing routines and uh, it's been great. And the new technology is really empowering for the older women. And I think it's really important that we honour men who are very supportive of what women do. So thank you, Graham and Stuart.
we rolling? Now Susan's chosen an amazing woman called Louisa Lawson to make a little documentary about. Now Louisa Lawson is really better known for being Henry Lawson's mother, but she was an incredible woman in her own right and made a terrific impact on Australian culture. So her grave is over here. So follow me. So we're going up to the. Um... Yep, going up to there. Just walk straight down, and then, yeah, there's a closer okay. bit. Now does this look fine? It looks yeah, lovely. it looks really nice. Um, no good. I had to have a Gosh, so noisy. Not as I bad as last train, week. My name is Susan O'Brien and uh, I'm in the process of making a film on Louisa Lawson. And the last time you would have heard about this was when we were at... Uh, uh, Rookwood Cemetery and the next stage or the next scene in the film was done this week and it was staged in a lovely old house in the rocks in the courtyard of the house because uh, it's got sandstone and it lends itself to it just a nice nice scene and it will also lend itself later on to a period times um, in the film. Um, the particular scene is uh, a group of women, contemporary, in contemporary costume, singing um, a poem by Lu Louisa Lawson, which has been set to music. And uh, the group were, they had a few uh, older women, they were older women and they had a few posters. And uh, then that will relate to scenes later on uh, set in the period, but all over it is to do with Louisa Lawson. <laughs> My name is Rhoda Sexton. I've been coming to the Battle Axe um, television production group for, uh, since the, the start of this and it's been about um, three months and it's just been fantastic. I really loved it. Um, we actually put our name onto the older women's website now and this is the look of it. I, I printed a, a page of it. so. Uh, you can all go and have a look at it and see what we did. Uh, um, I want to talk about the experience of buying equipments for Batarax. 
I have no idea of how to go about it at first, so went into the uh, website, looked at everything. Anybody who knows anything about camera, I ask. And so in the end, I found out how much they are, what is good and which is the best. And I actually get my friends and family to go down to different camera shop to talk to them first, before I even go up and talk to them myself, because that way it's uh, safer. And when I go up to the camera shop, I know what I'm talking about already and they don't ignore me. Otherwise, usually they see this little Chinese lady going up to the shop. They just don't even see that I exist. So I went in there, talked to the camera, um, the shop assistant. I said, I want this, 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 this. And they looked at me very impressed. So he, here they are. Um, the best um, camera that I can find that, um, is good for us that we need a mini DV tape so and we also need it light enough so we can carry it around. Got a phone jet, it's got a head what do you call this? Um headphone, headphone jet. jet, yeah and a microphone jet and it's got a pot to put your a fire wire pot to to load it back into the um, computer. The iPod that I looked at was very small and very, very light, and I thought this is perfect. I took it home, and my family had one look at it and say, what do you want this for? This is going to break in two minutes. Oh. <laughs> Go and get another one, I'll come with you. <laughs> so the next one that we got is pretty big and also mm. fairly professional looking. Mm. And when I said, this is too heavy, everybody <coughs> in the shop, plus my son-in-law who came with me said, no, this is exactly what you want. Don't <coughs> think about anything else. So here it is. I'll have to drag it along. Um, and then I said, well, I can't carry it. I need a camera bag. So the, the, they looked it up and said, oh, the, cam the tripod doesn't come with a camera bag, but oh. we can order one for you. It's $120. Oh. And I said, you kidding me? Oh. So I said, I can make one. Oh. So. Oh. I went down to cut Clark Rubbers, bought a piece of rubber, cost me $10, oh. and I made it. Now here's the camera bag, um, got a strap, and um, it, I padded it down the bottom so that it's easier, I mean it won't break so much, and that's it, just a tiny little bit, and the, the rest is just scraps. Very good. So battle axes have really got so many skills, haven't they? Rody, you're amazing. It's the next thing we need to buy is a um, microphone. So I looked it up and I find that the Rose video mic is one of the best. So I went and ordered one, got it, tried it out. Um, actually, I actually went to Jen's house and showed her all the equipment that I bought. And <coughs> one of the per people there, Evans, he looked at it and he said, this is not good enough. You need one that looks like Jen's. <laughs> so, and I did, I tried it out. The other camera, the other microphone, you can actually hear a lot of noise, background noise um, in it. But this one, there is just absolutely quiet. So it is a much better microphone to use. So went back to the shop, exchange it. And this is the second exchange I've done already, and they were very nice. Oh, I bought this camera bag. It's one of the, um, it's, it's a small backpack, but it fits everything into it perfectly. And it's the lightest that I can get that will fit all our equipment. I thought it's better to have a camera bag that I can put everything together so someone else who wants to borrow it will not have bits and pieces lying around. I'm Mary Williams, and I'd like to tell you an extraordinary story. Uh, something that I did was really very stupid, now I think back on it. But trying to be helpful doesn't, isn't always a good idea. So I arrived with my daughter and my sister in Melbourne. My sister had arranged to take us to the airport to come back to Sydney. Well, we arrived at the airport a little later than I'd like, but that was the way it was. And so 
My daughter and my sister went to the boot of the car to get the bits and pieces and our luggage. And I reached across and took the handbag from the back seat because I was always worried my daughter's going to leave something behind or that I will. We seem to share that, you know, always losing something. And so we arrived inside the airport. My sister and my, my daughter went to the boot of the car to take the bits and pieces out. And I reached in for the handbag in the back seat and said, here's your bag and they were ahead of me so they didn't I don't know whether they heard or what they did. So we arrived inside the airport, my sister took off home and I said to my daughter, here's your handbag and she said, that's not mine, that's Auntie Rita's. Well Auntie Rita had gone, hadn't she? What was I to do with this large handbag and it was heavy. So we arrived at the counter to get our onboard, whatever it is, and I asked the stewardess behind the counter, could we please leave this for my sister to pick up? I've taken it out of her car and she's gone home. Oh, everything became very vague. Well, well, we do charge. Um, I don't know where you might go. Do you have lost property? Well, yes, I think it's over in International. And I suddenly thought, no, I can't leave that handbag here. No way. Imagine the jazz my sister would have to go through and what if she, what if I lost it? So I took it to the queue where we were waiting to board the plane. And my daughter said, Mum, turn off your phone. And for some reason I said, no, I'm not turning off my mobile, not yet. Turn off your mobile space. <laughs> no, I'll turn it off when we get on board. So we got on board and the stewardess put everything up into the locker. I was right at the front of the aircraft. My daughter had to go right down to the back. And I said to this, she said, the stewardess said, I'm sorry you can't sit together. I said, oh, that's fine because we're fighting. She said, well, how was yesterday, Mother's? Oh, I said, Mother's Day was fine, but today's another day. We, we're fighting, so that's all right. So everything went into the locker, and I was right at the front, and I suddenly thought, I didn't turn off my mobile. Excuse me, could you please reach my... I was sitting in the middle of two people, so I really couldn't get up. Could you please pass my handbag? I haven't turned off my mobile phone. So she very willingly handed me down my handbag. I've never been so surprised, I don't think. As I unzipped it and took my phone out, it rang. Unfortunately, my phone vibrates rather than rings. Uh, hello? Yes, Rita, I have your handbag. I'm sorry. She said, how can I get it? Can you leave it at the airport? I said, no, can't trust them with your handbag here. I said, Danny has already sent you a text to say we have it. Oh yes, she said, but I didn't get a text because my phone's in the bag. <laughs> oh, um, well, how, she was panicking. How, well, how, how can, when will I get, I said, I'm not supposed to be talking because I'm supposed to have the phone turned off. I'll call you. So when I arrived home, I rang and said, are you still speaking to me? And she said, yes, 